All right, so we're still talking a little bit about state and federal laws of protected classes. And I want to touch a little bit more about specifically state laws and who can file a fair housing claim. So here's a good point. Who can file a fair housing claim? Well, the rule states, or the law states rather, that anyone that has been harmed by the housing action may file a complaint. So in other words, anybody that is associated with the tenant or a guest, a relative, a friend, a roommate, anybody would could file this complaint. Now here's an example that was given. This is not my example. This is one directly off the Indiana website. Uh, a housing provider treats a resident badly because he has a Mexican guest. The resident and the guest could file the fair housing complaint, all right? So anybody that's affected by the discriminatory act could file the complaint. Now, there's one other person here I kind of hid away, but I want you to see it. HUD themselves can actually file a complaint. And HUD has what they call testers in the state of Indiana. A tester would be somebody that may come into your property management office and ask you questions about a rental and then have someone else come in who is obviously of a different nationality, a different race, a different age, and ask you the same questions and you better be able to give them the same answers. So what they're doing is checking to see if perhaps you forgot, and I'm using finger quotes here, to tell the person of color that there was a house in Carmo for rent, but you told the white guy that, all right? So they actually do have testers, and if they find you in violation during this test, you, they themselves could actually file a complaint against you. So it does not necessarily just need to be the resident of the property. It could be the actual Indiana Department of Housing or the Indiana uh, section of HUD that files for it as well. Now, if there has been a violation, who is responsible for that violation? Well, everybody involved in the transaction potentially is not responsible. The property, the property owner, if they have a manager or a management company, anybody that is showing the property, like a staff member, any of the contractors working there that make a claim that seems to be violate the fair housing, any tenant company that screens the tenants, any media company that produces it. There's a huge kicker. I've got it buried down right here. If you place an ad in the Indianapolis Scott Star that is ultimately determined to be discriminatory, do you realize that the Indianapolis Star is also in violation and their management and owners can be sued as well? Even if it's your ad that you typed up and mailed to them and they said, yeah, we'll put your ad in and they invoice you and they run that ad that perhaps says, you know, whites only, they could be in violation as well of this fair housing claim. Other people that could be condo association, homeowners association, mobile park management, and in some cases, other residents could be. If you're in a roommate situation and one of your roommates says, well, I don't want that Mexican here again, that could be a fair housing discrimination. So the guest could file against the own roommate. All right. So there could be anybody file and a virtually everybody else in there uh, is liable. Now I didn't mention, and I do want to make sure I did say property management companies, but I specifically, maybe I left it out of here, but obviously the big, big one that I want you guys to see is obviously the agent can be liable as well. You know, if you're, if you're involved in the leasing, then obviously you're going to be in that group as well. Now, 
When you file a complaint, you have 365 days of the alleged act to file a complaint. And when you file that complaint, you would file it with the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. They are probably going to kick it back down to the state's level and let the state agency handle the situation. And when they go through this violation, there's a couple of different things they do. The first one they're going to do is this thing called mediation, or you hear it called conciliation. Mediation is basically where they bring both parties together and they try and find out if there was an intent. Uh, was it on purpose? Was it flagrant? Is, are they sorry they did it? Are both parties agree? And if that's the case, then maybe mediation would be uh, the first step. If mediation's not, then they can actually file a violation against a person and if that person happens, then they go to an ALJ, which stands for the Administrative Law Judge. And the Administrative Law Judge would be one where he would determine the guilt or innocence, or guilt or not guilt, actually. And then there is a prescribed set of penalties, depending on if it was your first time, second time, third time violation, all right? <clears throat> So there is a process that has to be filed in a timely manner. And to do that, um, you would file with HUD and it could kick it back up to the state's violations. All right. So we're getting close to the end here. We've got a couple more chapters left. Uh, we're talking a little bit about cultural diversity. And once again, if you have any questions, I encourage you to email me at Raymond at Real University. Dot com and that's an A. All right, any questions? We'll be right back. <laughs>